It's not easy to describe the Mandelbrot set visually. It looks like a man, it looks like a cat, it looks like a cactus, it looks like a cockroach. It's got little bits and pieces that remind us of almost anything that you can see out in the real world, particularly living things. So it has a, a character that reminds us of a lot of things, and, and yet it itself is unique and, and new. The Mandelbrot set is real, an absolute thing, no question whatsoever. Any mathematician or any computer scientist or student in a school can study it and find the same, describe the same thing. It's a common experience. And so such things that can be magnified forever and have infinite precision do exist, but they're not touchable. It's a geometrical shape, an, an icon, if you wish, which somehow embodies as an example a very important aspect of how the world works. Somebody recently actually called this set the thumbprint of God. Now we'll begin our serious exploration of the Mandelbrot set. A voyage which, in fact, could last forever and ever, much longer than the lifetime of the universe. I have here the full set, about six inches across. Now, if I blow this up, I'll increase the magnification now 13 times. And you see more and more detail is appearing. And the interesting thing is you see mini Mandelbrots, replicas, almost identical, yet perhaps subtly different, of the original set. And I can go on doing this. Here is a magnification of more than 3,000 times. So the original picture, about six inches across, is now half a mile across. And no matter how much we magnified it, a million times, a billion times, until the original set was bigger than the entire universe, we would still see new patterns, new images emerging, because the frontier, the end set, is infinitely complex. And when I say infinitely, I really mean that. Most people, when they say infinitely, they mean only or rather big. But this is really infinity. so remarkable, in fact, astounding, about the Mandelbrot set is that although it's infinitely complex, it's based on incredibly simple principles, unlike almost everything in modern mathematics. In fact, anybody who can add and multiply can understand the principles on which it's based. You don't even have to subtract or divide, still less use logarithms or trigonometrical functions to comprehend how the Mandelbrot set is created. In fact, in principle, it could have been discovered any time in human history, and not merely in 1980. But the problem is this, although it's only based on adding and multiplying, you have to carry out those operations millions, billions of times to create a complete set. And that's why it was not discovered until the era of modern computers. There's an interesting parallel with 
the equation that almost everybody is familiar with, the only equation almost everybody is familiar with, E equals mc squared, Albert Einstein's equation that says matter and energy are equivalent to each other. That was a very simple equation with very far-reaching consequences. And the equation for the Mandelbrot set is equally simple, z equals z squared plus c. The letters in the Mandelbrot equation stand for numbers, unlike those in Einstein's equation where they stand for physical quantities, mass, velocity, energy. The Mandelbrot numbers are coordinates, positions on the plane, defining the location of a spot. Another difference from Einstein's equation, and a very important one, is this double arrow. It's a kind of two-way traffic sign. The numbers flow in both directions, constantly feeding back on themselves. This process of going round and round a loop is called iteration. It's rather like a dog chasing its own tail. The output of one operation becomes the input of the other, and so on and on and on. When the Mandelbrot equation is given a number representing a point, and that number is iterated through the equation, one of two things happen. Either the number gets bigger and bigger and shoots off to infinity, or it shrinks to zero. Depending on which happens, the computer then knows where to draw a boundary line. So what we get from this basic iteration is a kind of map dividing this world into two distinct territories. Outside of it are all the numbers that have the freedom of infinity. Inside it, numbers that are prisoners trapped and doomed to ultimate extinction. Now look what's happening. At the tip of each hair, it splits into two others and so on. Each is splitting, going on indefinitely. This splitting up, this bifurcation, going off into apparently random directions quite abruptly is typical of a class of mathematical entities called fractals. The Mandelbrot set is the most famous fractal. The word fractal means any geometrical structure that has detail on all scales of magnification. No matter how big you make it, you still see extra new details you didn't see before. And the name was actually invented by Mandelbrot himself. He felt he had to have a name for this area he realized he was working in. And so he coined the term fractal because it conveys this feeling of fragmented, broken, fractional, irregular. A common characteristic of fractal systems is branching. Trees, circulatory systems, and rivers, for example, all display branching fractal patterns. There are lots of fractal systems within the body. Um, in my work on uh, the heart, um, the heart is actually full of fractals. The most famous example of it is the blood vessels coming into the heart. The coronary circulation is a pattern of a branching network of blood vessels that's typically fractal, where the branching structures look very similar at different scales. Even snowflakes, known for their dissimilarity from each other, display a fractal pattern internally. Fractals are shapes which we are extraordinarily used to in, uh, how to say, our subconscious, ill-organized uh, life. For example, everybody knows that if you take a map of Britain on a small uh, school globe, you see a very simplified shape. Cornwall is just a kind of triangle and Wales perhaps a little rectangle. You cannot put the details on a, big, on a, on a small map. If you look at in a larger map, you add more detail. The closer you come in a certain sense, imagine yourself like somebody coming in a, on a rocket. From far away you see very little, and the closer you come, the more detail you see. If we come very, very close, you begin to see rocks, and finally the idea of coastline disappears, because one doesn't know any longer where is, where is land and where is water. So indeed was um, um, arose in my mind to put together a geometry based upon many known facts in mathematics, scattered facts in mathematics, many scattered facts in, in our experience, many scattered facts in uh, the results of what scientists had done of various kinds, many all kinds of, uh, um, of um, putting together all these things and using them as uh, bricks, if you will, of a new building, which is a new geometry. Living creatures seem to be complicated structures produced from simple rules, simple laws of physics and chemistry, 
and a lot of the structure that you see in living creatures is organic but pattern structure leaves on trees ferns particularly things like that have the same feature that the mandelbrot set has of uh, you look at little pieces of them and they have lots and lots of detail and in fact the little pieces look very similar sometimes to the whole thing it's very tempting to compare the the way a simple formula produces a complicated Mandelbrot set with the way very tiny things in nature produce complicated organisms. And there are certainly some similarities in that there is the same kind of unfolding of a process. The instructions are there but not an actual description of the object.